and welcome to It's Not Over with Dr. Dan Farrell. We're so glad that you're tuning in today. Please don't uh, change the YouTube channel. Uh, do not uh, all of a sudden be interrupted by listening to Sermon Audio. Whatever you're doing right now, however you are listening to this podcast, we want to thank you so much for it. And please stay tuned for the next 15 minutes. And hopefully you will be encouraged through what Dr. Farrell has. Dr. Farrell, how are you? Real good. We're going to start with 2 Timothy 4, verse 1 through 5. Mr. Brian. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Amen. All right, now, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 through 5. Read that. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But, but, but watch, watch thou in all things, enduring affliction. Do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Now here's what's interesting, men, that in the past, in Greek and Roman culture, Osiris cult, which was in Egypt, the Mithra cult in Persia, the Orphic cult in Thrace in Greece, and the Juno cult in Syria, they all spoke with some type of mutterings and chatter. Interesting. That was part of their rituals, that they reached some type of karma or some type of ecstatic feeling, the spirit, the channel guides. Eskimos in Greenland spoke in muttering, led by the medicine man or the shaman or a priest, the beating of drums, singing, dancing, nudity, howling like a wolf, crying loudly, and then speaking in ecstatic languages. In church history, the New Testament church, uh, of course, is silent about the ecstatic use of mutterings and mumblings 100 A.D., 200 A.D., 300 A.D., 400 A.D., 500 A.D., 600 A.D. I mean, it's just silence. Montanus was accused of it. The Catholic Church did. They accused him of that. In 1743 in France, mass hysteria broke out during the Dark Ages, and they said there were some mutterings, but they attribute that to the devil. In 1841 to 1843 in Norway and Sweden, the Druids... Their children, 4 to 12 years of age, would speak in a static gibberish, but it was because of unclean spirits. In 1692 to 1693, witch purges, the witch, the Salem witch trials and so on, supposedly children spoke out. And then Mormons, Catholics, Shakers, Irvinites, Campbellites, Welsh Revivalists, Pentecostals, Holiness, Assembly of God, Methodists, Apostolics, Church of God, American Baptist Convention, Presbyterians, Lutherans, Quakers, Nazarenes, Episcopalians, and Disciples of Christ, and about two dozen off-brands, supposedly now has what's called the speaking and ecstatic mutterings. Richard G. Sperling left a dead Baptist church, he said, in 1896, and started a tongue-speaking church of God along with the Tomlinson family. And then Charles Parham, Parham 1873 to 1929, started the Pentecostal movement, the Bethel Healing Home of 1898, and the Bethel Bible College, 1900, Topeka, Kansas. The first outbreak of speaking in mutterings and mumblings was Mrs. Agnes Osmond, who was seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost. She spoke with tongues never previously studied, January 1st, 1901, on, on Azusa Street in Los Angeles. In 1905, the Houston Bible School, W.J. Seymour, disowned by the Nazarenes, started a black holiness movement. And then on April 4th, 1906, they were meeting on the famous 312 Azusa Street and had a Holy Ghost baptism and visions of Jesus Christ sitting on the throne, bleeding. 
Now, this is a, the basically a synopsis of what we have uh, in reference to this tongue speaking. Notice we don't see any of the great missionaries, none of the great revivalists, none of the great movements of church history. I'm talking about Baptists and your mainstream Protestant. You don't see any of that. It's these fringe, goofy, either demonic groups, occultic, cultic groups, right. or some weirdo that is sitting on Azusa Street. With the shoebox on his head. With the shoebox on his head. If you know anything about the Azusa Street Revival. Is that right? They had... He had started when he put a shoebox on his head. Ah, oh, it's crazy. I, I don't even want to get into it. It's just oh so nutty. Goodness. All well, right, so today, of course, we have, we've we had the full gospel businessmen, international, and the charismatic... And by the way, the promise keepers and the full... Their agenda is to get into every church and introduce... The nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and being slain in the Spirit, and so on. Hmm. It's very interesting, because I remember another group that had an agenda uh, with getting into churches. I think they were called the Jesuits. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And you got to wonder sometimes... And now... After all this uh, charismatic, you know, we've seen the fruits of it. We've seen maybe 100 years of it now, 115 years. And what do we see? We see all the charismatics going to Rome. Right. Wow. Every one of them. Every one of them. Oh, yeah. I remember uh, Kenneth Copeland. I read his magazine. Did you? And the guy writing the article uh, had met with the Pope. And he was getting all buddy-buddy with the Pope. And, like, the main title of that, or quote of that page was that, you know, doctrine... It's talking about how doctrine divides mm. and how division is demonic, right? But unity, oh, wow. unity is what it's about. That's uh. divine. Oh my goodness! Yeah, there, there is scary. a big push now again. Now here's now here's another thought. A thought I just had. Now, um, J. Frank Norris, you would say that he was mm -hmm. probably maybe the founder of the fundamentalist movement or one mm -hmm. of the founders or mm -hmm. something like that. You know, he met with the Pope mm -hmm. a couple of times, and uh, he said that. Catholicism wasn't our enemy, that communism was our enemy. And so I, I think J. Frank Norris is a good man. I'm, I'm not yeah. saying that he's a Kenneth Copeland. But uh, we saw the fundamentalist movement basically mimic the ecumenical movement in that certain doctrines were dropped so that these fundamentalists could all get together and fight modernism. Right. And so, you know, it just makes you wonder just how much of this right. is a scheme. I, of course, it's a scheme of the devil, but how much of this is really just engineered? Well, like when right. the Catholic Church fights abortion, it, 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 isolate that. Is that a good thing? Well, of course it is. Yeah. If the Catholic Church comes out and says that we believe in the sanctity of marriage, mm -hmm. you isolate that. That's a good thing, you yep. see. But, you know, they give you an ounce of sugar and a pound of poison. Right. Is what they do. Here's the real problem. In addition to that, you've got Baptists and scriptural churches that won't stand up, that will not voice the protest. And so the Catholic Church, uh, boy, of course, the, the, the little ditty that really bears repeating is when the Catholic Church is the minority, they mm -hmm. are as meek as a lamb. When they're in equality, they're as cunning as a fox. When the Catholic Church is in the majority, they're as ruthless as a lion. Mm -hmm. They've got to get in the majority, though, see? They've got to get that, that death grip. Right. And so, of course, we've gone through the PTL Cub, the 700 Cub, the Praise the Lord, the TBN Network, and all that stuff. And it's still the vestiges of that. But here's the other thing. It's not just that. It's all those singing groups. The Southern Gospel, Southern Gospel, um, many of them, I'd say a good 50% of them. This is why I like Southern Gospel music, some of it. I don't like all of it. Mm -hmm. I don't. And because a lot of it was the introduction of the charismatic movement right. into Baptist churches. That's right. I mean, they were all in that. Mm -hmm. Any, all of those groups, I would say almost all of them, were promoting a charismatic. Mm -hmm. But when they'd come to churches like my home church, I used to go to a church in Cincinnati called Landmark. And sometimes they'd come to Landmark, and of course they'd be on their good behavior. Yeah. But that charismatic junk, you'd still see it. Mm -hmm. You still would see it. And Baptists began to compromise with that because Baptists want to be on the cutting edge. Mm -hmm. They don't want to lose ground, so to speak. I, it's just so pragmatic. It makes me sick. Hmm. Um, Interesting. You, you know, want to say something? Some, okay. I've heard some things about those uh, gospel, uh, the you know, like you're saying, the Southern Gospel stuff. A lot of those, and of course, I haven't actually checked my sources on this, but I heard that a lot of those, uh, a lot of those singers were actually homosexuals. A lot of yeah, homosexuals and stuff. Yeah, I don't know how many, but boy, it's coming out now, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's sad. All right. So this speaking in an unknown tongue, of course, I believe is being used of the devil to give somebody a false experience. You know, if somebody believes a false doctrine, but they but they believe the Bible, 
if you get to them in time, you can talk them out of that thing. Mm -hmm. It's hard to talk somebody out of an experience. Yeah. And sure is. Pardon the expression, but it's like a dog sucking eggs. Once a dog starts sucking hen eggs, man, I mean, you can't hardly break them. And once they get this ecstatic feeling, one guy, I mean, he, I'm not going to use the word he used, but he equated it to a sexual, a sexual feeling, a sexual arousal. And they want to seek it again and again and well, again. Well, that's not a god. That's, that's not, not a god. That is definitely of the devil. In fact, his wife was going through it. And she said, honey, there's something. And he said, just lay on the floor and let it come over you. T- that is and so she <laughs> laid on the floor. This guy gave his own personal this is testimony. terrible. And she was having a sexual arousal feeling. And this spirit came over her. Yep. It's of the devil. That's true. They talk about this stuff. Uh, I've talked to people just, who are from Africa who talk about this sort of stuff, and they are evil spirits yeah. that will oh, yeah. come over. I just, I just cannot believe these people, man. And these people call themselves believers uh, right. and Christians. Uh-huh. And hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah. Well, you know who else speaks in tongues? Uh, we were out preaching in Chicago, street preaching and passing out tracts, and I talked to this half-naked guy. Uh, he was out of his mind. Uh, he was talking about how he just came back to life the lord saved him because last night he shot it with heroin and the lord saved him well he's he's calling himself by one name then another name it was a schizo finally i came to the conclusion he's full of devils i started rebuking the devil this guy started speaking in tongues foaming at the mouth snorting like a horse it was wild i said well there's your tongues and that guy was full of the devil yeah jordan would you get isaiah 8 isaiah 8 19 and 20 now let me say this Nowhere in the Bible do you see the Holy Spirit slaying anybody. Right. It's not in there. Mm. But there are people being slayed by spirits in the Bible, but they're unclean spirits. Remember that boy that was full of the devil? Yeah. And the Bible says the spirit tore him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Threw him in the fire, threw him in the water, and the Lord Jesus Christ cast the, the spirit out. But he, he, he threw the boy down. Now, that is the only place in the Bible where people are thrown down and levitate and foam at the mouth is by unclean spirits. What does Isaiah 8, 19 and 20 say? And when they shall say unto you, seek unto them that a familiar spirit and unto wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word... It is because there is no light in them. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll continue this tomorrow. We'd like to thank you for listening and uh, encourage you to go to sermonaudio.com slash it's not over where you can find all of our archived uh, podcasts. And uh, then also we'd ask that you'd subscribe to our YouTube channel by uh, going to YouTube if you have not already. Browse by channels and search for It's Not Over. And there's a red button there underneath uh, our videos that says subscribe. If you could click on that and then share some videos with your friends or family, uh, we'd appreciate it. And also there's a section there on YouTube where you can comment and uh, just say how much of a blessing maybe this teaching has been to you or something like that. We always appreciate any encouragement uh, since we try to be an encouragement to you. And then at uh, MorningStarNetwork.org, if you uh, feel so led to help with this ministry, then uh, you can do so by donating through the PayPal button uh, for uh, tax write-off uh, donations. And anybody who uh, donates $50 or more will uh, be sure to send you a copy of Dr. Farrell's latest book, Soul Winning, Why So Important. And that's a little stick of dynamite to get you motivated and uh, help you to get out and spread the gospel. And so here's Dr. Farrell to close. I'd like to answer this question. Why was the charismatic movement growing and popular? Number one, a lack of Bible study and doctrine in true churches. Number two, liberal coal churches were seeking for something. Number three, many fundamental churches were dead. Number four, people are looking for thrills. Number five, people were looking for an easy, quick spirituality. And then number six, and we'll deal with this tomorrow, I believe the devil himself was behind it.